Hello friend, welcome back to Eager Homestead. My name is Becky, if you are new, I welcome you into my kitchen. Today we're not gonna be in the kitchen for much time at all. All we're gonna do is fill up some water and we're gonna head into the grow room. We've got some really fun things happening out there and some really fun things we're about to start. We're gonna learn a new skill together today that I'm really looking forward to. It's something that I've wanted to try for years and today is the day we get to try it. But we need some water in order to do that. I got two packages in the mail and we're gonna open those two packages together. And one of the things that we're gonna be working on today is in one of those packages. We're also going to be finally taking care of these fig branches. These are some fig cuttings that I took from the last homestead and they've just been sitting in water on the window seal since we moved. And they are really looking forward to I think getting into some soil. So let's go head out there. I also have some recycled containers we're gonna use for this new skill we're learning today. I'm gonna to get my water and all my things and I'll meet you in the grow room. So I got two packages in the mail this week that I have been looking forward to. Oh shoot, I just, Ripped off a little piece of my fig leaf. I think the fig will be okay. They seem to be pretty hardy if they can stay in this jar for months and months and months with no nutrients or anything and grow leaves. Okay, so the first package I got, I'm gonna close this door so that it stays nice and warm in here. We've got a package here and we've got a package here. Let's go through this one first because I'm really excited about it. What this box is, is this is a box from Greenstock. If you were in my last garden, you know I had two Greenstocks. And I kept saying last year, I want two more, I want two more. Well, I got two more. <laughs> and, oh, I'm so excited. I can't plant in this yet, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna start seeds of what we're gonna actually plant in this Greenstock. Actually, in both of these Greenstocks. So what a green stock is, is it is a vertical garden. So if you don't have much space, this is a great solution for you. Oh, it's kind of heavy here. Here we go. And this year, I want one, I've been dreaming of this. Ever since last year, when I had my two green stocks, one of them I had planted out in 100% strawberries, and the other one I had planted out in strawberries and veggies. And I was saying, because I had the best success I've ever had with my strawberries in my green stock last year, as opposed to having them in my raised beds, because I had planted my strawberries and asparagus together, and because of that, it was really hard for me to maintain my strawberry bed, and so, because the asparagus got really, really big and overgrown. And so if we had stayed at the last homestead and I got a bunch more of these, I wanted to plant them all out in strawberries. But now this homestead here, the previous owner has six dedicated raised beds to strawberries and they have done, or last year, they did really, really well. So I was trying to think, what do I wanna do with my green stalks this year? And I've been dreaming about it ever since last year. And on my green stalks, on one of them, I had flowers and veggies. And some of the flowers did so well on that last year's green stalks. So I've been dreaming about having one designated green stalk for just nasturtium flowers and another green stalk with just petunias. Because those flowers did so well last year on my green stalks, I thought how stunning would it be if they were just surrounded in flower beauty. <laughs> Because one thing, if you're new around here, I'm focusing on is not only having a productive food producing garden, but I also want to have beauty in my garden. And so to have just two towers, I'm just envisioning two towers, just full of blooms. So we're gonna start those flower seeds today. So my new green stalks, I have the wheel base. My other green stalks have a spinner base. I wanted these because I'm gonna put these on my patio. And this is how they go together. They go together really easily. Now, obviously, 
these would need soil in them when you go to plant in them. I'm just putting these together so we can see what they look like put together. Because the ones that I have that I used last year, they are the leaf version, which the planting section here is a little bit shorter. And that's what I'm going to plant out with my flowers. And they did fantastic for my strawberries. And this is the original. And this planter is the one that does better with bigger vegetables, like your tomatoes, your kales, those types of things. I plan to have one that is going to be dedicated to peppers, I think, and one that is going to be dedicated to salad. It's going to be like a, a rolling salad bar is kind of what I'm envisioning with some tomatoes, everything you would need for salad, herbs, tomatoes, lettuce, radishes, things like that. If you're interested in a green stock, I want to let you know about something pretty incredible. Green stock reached out to me and they wanted to offer my viewers one of the best deals they have offered. They've never offered this before and I'm pretty excited to share it with you. They are offering, if you shop through my link and you use my discount code, you can get these original five tiered green stocks for $99 and you can get as many of them as you want at that price. They've never done this before. Typically when they have a sale, you only get the sale price on one green stock. And so today, March 12th through March 16th, you can get as many green stocks if you shop through my link and use my code for $99. And this is not a sponsored video. They just wanted to offer this incredible deal to my viewers and I am so excited to share it with you. I'm gonna go run and grab my other two, my leaves, my shorter ones, so that we can set those up in here and you can kind of see the difference between the original and the leaf. Okay, so I not only need to grab the green stalks, but I need to grab some pots for our fig plants, or fig trees, I should say. Trying to think what I want to plant those fig trees in. Let's see. I'm going to probably have to up pot them. So maybe I will just. I can't put them outside yet because they've been inside in a very controlled environment for so long that if I was to plant them and put them outside, I would completely shock them. So I need to put them in something that they can probably just come back in the house. I wish I had one more small one like this. Maybe we'll do three different sizes. These will be our fig planters. And then here is my other green stock, the one that I had planted out last year. And these are roller or spinning bases. The ones that I got for the new ones are, they ha they're on wheels, so they roll around. This is a stationary and you can choose either one, whichever one you think would fit your situation the best. If you're somewhere where you don't have enough, a very much sun, but and you've got a flat spot, you might want a roller one, then you can kind of ro roll it around, say your patio, and kind of chase that sun. This here is where the previous owner has their strawberries. And if I didn't have this, my two small green stalks that I'm gonna set up in just a second, I would plant out in strawberries. But because I have this, then I am going to have my two small ones just filled with flowers. And we're gonna go inside and start those seeds right now. 
Before I start the seeds, I wanted to set up my leaf green stalks. I'm not putting in the great insert. That part is what helps distribute the water. It's what allows you to water from the top only. So when you water your green stalks, you don't have to water each individual cell. You can just water from the top and it distributes throughout the entire green stalk. I'm just setting this up so I can see the comparison between the leaf and the original. The leaf is what I'm setting up right now. You can see that the container size is much smaller compared to the original. And these are ones that do better with smaller, more tender type things versus the originals do much better with your tomatoes and peppers and your heartier, bigger vegetables that you think of like broccoli and cabbage. And I also wanted to mention that if you spend over $150, you get free shipping to the lower 48 states with this sale. Now that I have those all set up, it is time to get our hands in some dirt. I'm going to put some gloves on. I am a gardener that likes to wear gloves. And the first thing I'm going to do is fill the pots for the fig cuttings because this was something that was super easy. Now this soil was sitting outside and it is very, very cold. So because the soil is cold and I'm going to be putting these room temperature figs in that soil, I don't want to shock them. I've got my heat mats on right here. I'm going to take these pots and I'm going to, I was going to plant them right away, but I had this spot. I'm going to put the soil and the pots on the heat mats and we're just going to let the soil come up to more room temperature so we don't shock our plants. The last thing I want to do, I mean, honestly, I didn't do anything for these to have them grow. They just did their thing. I wasn't even going to take cuttings from that fig tree, but one of my friends encouraged me. She's like, why aren't you going to take cuttings? It was because when we were moving, I just didn't have the bandwidth for anything that was going to be complicated. So in my head, I was not going to take any cuttings from that fig tree. But when Josh and I were walking through the garden for the last time, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go break off some branches. So that's all I did. I did not even cut them with nice cutting shears or pruning shears or anything. I just went out there and literally chopped off, not chopped off, I literally just snapped off these four pieces of branches. I stuck them in water and the only thing I have done for these fig cuttings is maybe three or four times since August 19th, I have changed the water. That is all I have done. I have not fed them, I have not done anything, and they have grown leaves. So <laughs> I don't wanna shock them right now by sticking them into cold soil. So now let's go through this box. This is another thing that I've been really looking forward to. I got some more seeds. I mentioned that I really only did three orders I did a huge MI Gardener seed haul, and then I did a medium size order through Johnny Seeds. And we're gonna start some of these seeds today. Some of them are gonna be going in our green stock, and a lot of them are just gonna be going out into the main garden. One thing I do not like about Johnny Seed Packets is they do not put the picture of what the item is or what the plant is. So I'm gonna insert right here what the plant is so you can see what I bought. The first thing, this is something I wanted to grow last year, but they all the seeds were sold out and I couldn't find it anywhere, is Silver Dollar Eucalyptus. And this is a tender perennial. So I think in my zone it should perennialize, but time will tell because I know we're a lot colder here than we were at our last homestead. And I've heard these are extremely difficult to grow. So we're gonna attempt to try to start some of those today. The next thing I ordered is a hybrid. It's Italian large leaf DMR hybrid basil that is supposed to be powdery mildew resistant. The next four items that I ordered are a flower and these are something that I've never grown before, but you know, I watched Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and she grows these and I have to try them this year. So they are, all four of these are different stock varieties. The first one is vintage brown stock. The next one is cat's high stock. And this is supposed to be a double. And stock is supposed to have a fantastic fragrance. So that is one of the reasons why I wanted to grow it. One of my favorite flowers of all time are lilacs and I love them. I've had them at every single house I've ever lived in, including the ones growing up. 
and the fragrance on those is beautiful. So I want to put a couple more things in my garden that have a really beautiful fragrance. Cat Ruby is the next stock variety that I grew, or grew, that I ordered. And Iron Purple is the last one. So I got four different varieties of stock. I've never grown those before, so that's gonna be fun. And then I ordered a huge packet of cilantro. You all know what that looks like. That's one thing I do like about Johnny Seeds is you can order in bulk. And this was clearly something that I did not need to order in bulk. This is parsley. And it looks like I have one ounce of parsley. And there are probably, it says that in one pound of parsley seeds, you get 21,000 seeds. This is one ounce. So it's a 16th of that. So this is more parsley seeds than I'm ever gonna need. So I guess the problem when you can order in bulk is sometimes you can order way too many. The next four seed packets are tomato seed packets. These two are ones that I've grown before and they are just your classic, beautiful, round, gorgeous tomato. They're both a hybrid tomato. This one is Wisconsin 55 and this one is Martha's, Martha Washington. Martha Washington, <laughs> both of these are ones that I've grown before and I was out of the seed, so I wanted to get some of those. And then I got two different cherry tomatoes. For some reason last year, I completely forgot to grow any cherry tomatoes. So this is just a hybrid cherry tomato, it's called Jasper. And then this one here is Clementine cherry tomato, F1. I got some Napoli carrots. These are carrots that I grew last year. I didn't get to harvest any of them because they didn't mature in time by the time we moved. And then these are some pelleted carrots. These are Bolero carrots. Oh, it looks like, see, I didn't mean to do this. <laughs> I ordered two of the exact same thing of pelleted carrot seeds. Let me show you what a pelleted carrot seed looks like. Carrot seeds are super, super tiny. And so a pelleted seed is just a seed that has a little bit of a clay coating on it. And what that does is it makes it so that it's a little bit easier to plant because you can space them out a little bit more appropriately. And then you spend less time thinning them later on. The, th the one downside about pelleted carrot seeds is one, they are a little bit more expensive, but you lose less because you have to thin less and they don't last as long. You need to use them the year you buy them. Something about the clay coating, just the seed doesn't stay as healthy as long. So we got those and then I got a big packet of jade green beans. I love jade green beans. And one thing I do like about Johnny Seeds is you can order in bulk. So this is a, I don't know how many seeds are in here, <laughs> a lot. This is a bush variety. I like bush green beans. I've just had better luck with bush green beans. This here though, this is what we're gonna learn and we're gonna experiment with together. I've been wanting one of these since I started gardening and today is the day we are going to use it. It's called a soil blocker. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. We're gonna find out together. And then on Johnny Seeds, you have to order $200 in order to get free shipping. And so it was gonna cost me, I was close to the $200, I think I was at like 174 and then it was gonna be $17 in shipping. So I thought, you know what? I might as well find one more thing to put into my cart so that I don't have to pay shipping. And this is what I got. I have seen other gardeners use this. This is a tool that I've been wanting for a really long time. I've never used this garden tool before, but it is one that you can kind of use as a shovel to put seedlings in the ground. A trowel, you could use it as a trowel, but the biggest reason why I got it is for weeding. It's supposed to be a really good weeder because it's got this pointy end and anything that can make weeding a little bit easier. I actually have a plan this year that's crazy. I've never seen anyone do it before to help prevent weeds in my garden, but we can talk about that later. So I got this. So that is my Johnny Seed Haul. So let's go ahead and let's break this thing out and let's get some soil blocks made so that we can start some seeds. The reason I got these out is because we are going to put soil blocks on these because I'm starting to run out of trays. So I'm gonna have to get creative. We are gonna make soil blocks out of our Vermont compost.
We need this soil to be pretty damp in order to make these soil blocks. That's why I got out water. I'm going to start with that much water and I'm only going to mix it into half of this compost here. So from what I understand, when you're making soil blocks, you want the soil nice and damp where it can hold its shape, but you don't want to squeeze and have a ton of water come out. So I think we're there. I think that's perfect. So for a half a bag of compost, a half gallon of water, and then we take our soil blocker and you really want to compact the soil in there. I still consider myself a very, very new gardener and I'm trying to learn what my favorite methods are and what works best for me. There's not one way to do anything when it comes to gardening. It's whatever works best for you and whatever makes it enjoyable for you. And I've always wanted to try this. So today is the day. Woohoo! Okay. So there's supposed to be like a little hole. Oh, I forgot to add the plugs. Okay. This is what was attached to this and I just took it off and threw it to the side. I mean, I don't need those, but I do need them. So those need to go on here. And what that's going to do is put a little hole in the middle of the soil block so that that's where you can put your seed. There we go. So I'm gonna dump this out and remake it because you can see there's no hole. I need a hole to be in each one of these. All right, that makes a lot more sense. So on this recycled zucchini tray, I'm going to be able to fit three rows, I think. Oh my goodness, friends, I love it. Just like in anything, each seed starting method has its pros and cons. One of, a couple of the pros for soil blocking is your one reducing the amount of plastic because you're not using plastic seeding trays. And it's supposed to be really good for the root system because when, I don't know the science behind it, but when seedlings are growing, when they touch plastic, the sides of seed cells, then they start wrapping around and that's when they get root bound. But one of the cons you could say is it takes more upfront time because you have to go through the effort of making these. And I honestly don't know what my favorite way of starting seeds is going to be, but I'm really excited to give this a try. I have seen people use soil blocks on the internet for years, and I've always wanted to try them. The reason I haven't bought it up until this year is because I technically already had what I needed in order to start my seeds indoors. I had already purchased trays and seedling cells, and I didn't want to replace something when I technically had what I needed already in order to start seeds indoors. But my seedling cells, I've never been happy with them. I'll show you in a little bit why I'm not happy with them. And they're starting to fall apart. And so this year is probably going to be the last year that I'm going to be able to use them. So I am using them this year, even though I'm not super happy with them because they're still usable and I don't want to waste them. But I've already run out. I only have two more and I know that I'm going to use those up at some point. And so it was a good time to go ahead and make the purchase for a soil blocker because I'm starting so many more seeds and my garden is so much bigger that I, I'm going to be able to use this soil blocker and get my money's worth out of it. Now these trays though, so my seedling cells, I've never been happy with, but these trays, 
that I'm putting the soil blocks on now, I've been so happy with them. I'm going on my fourth year using them and I think I'm gonna be able to use these trays for years and years and years to come. They are a little bit more expensive. I've had these and last year I ended up having to toss the cheaper ones that I had away because they had holes in the bottom and they weren't holding water. And I like to bottom water once the seedlings start to grow and because there was holes in them, that wasn't a possibility. So I'm super happy with these trays. Now what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm reading all the back of my seed packets and I'm trying to match how long it takes for something to germinate and I'm trying to put things that have the same germination time next to each other. I didn't really plan that out with some of the other seedlings I had already started this year and because I'm going to put a lot of this stuff on the heat mat, not everything is going to germinate on the heat mat, but what is, I want to make sure that I'm not putting something that takes two weeks to germinate with something that takes four to five days to germinate because the ones that have germinated then need to go under the grow lights. I can't keep them on the heat mat and the ones that have not germinated yet still want to be on the heat mat. So I didn't think that through fully when I started some of my other seeds and so I was trying to be a lot more thoughtful and planning what goes in what. Now going through more seeds because I'm starting a lot more seeds today than I thought I was going to and so I'm just trying to organize everything and get everything out so that I can start planting all the seeds at the same time. I have some thoughts. Now, like I was saying earlier, gardening, there's not one size fits all. <laughs> Everybody needs to figure out what works best for them. And that's the kind of progression I am still trying to figure out what works best for me. So far, I'm very happy with these soil blocks. And one of the reasons why I'm so much happier with these soil blocks than I am with the seed cells that I have, let me show you over here, for example. Now, these are my pepper plants and my cell trays do not fit properly in my trays. And so I always have to be so careful when watering because these dry out, especially when I bottom water. Oh wow, look at those beautiful roots. Then these ones sit higher up so they don't absorb the moisture as well. And so I've always struggled with this, but I haven't wanted to get rid of these yet because I wanna wait until they're like completely falling apart. It's getting pretty close but they don't sit flush inside my trays. And so that's always been a problem for me. Now I do have these smaller ones where the tray fits in really nicely and I really like these. And the ones that I have ordered are this style where the tray fits nicely in them. And if you're going to have trays like this inside or sell trays inside your trays, you definitely wanna make sure that they fit nicely so when you bottom water, all the trays get watered equally. Versus up here, you can see again, my cabbages up here are sitting way higher than my asparagus. But I'm not gonna have that problem when it comes to soil blocking because everything is clearly sitting in this tray. Now, maybe I should leave one of these out so I can water from the side because what I'm gonna do is pour water so they can bottom water. Hmm, I'm still learning. See over here you can see how I have some space so I could put water here and kind of let it just through osmosis absorb into the rest of them. So I think what I should probably do is remove this last row. I was trying to keep it, or I was trying to put as many rows in one tray as possible. So, so far I'm loving this. And it's just a matter of really just getting in there and trying a few different things and figuring out what works best for you. Now, I took it took me a long time to lay this out and kind of figure out what I'm planting where. This whole lettuce container is going to be my eucalyptus. These two, I'm going to do my stock. I've got my four different colors here. And what I tried to do is put things in the same containers that have the same-ish germination rate, or not germination rate, I should say, germination time between when I plant it and when it should germinate. So in this one, I'm gonna do lavender and rosemary because that takes up to 28 days. Both of those take up to 28 days to germinate. And then we have our nasturtiums. I'm gonna do this whole thing of nasturtiums. I've got these three really beautiful colors. These ones are the ones that I'm gonna put in the green stock. And then I have these nasturtiums here. 
I'm gonna put these nasturtiums in the garden. Got some dirt on me. And nasturtiums don't need it to be really warm to germinate. Their ideal germination temperature is 60 to 65 degrees. So I don't need to have these on the heat mat. So I've got these few, this is like my random tray where there was two pepper plants in a cell. I transplanted them into here. And so I'm just gonna plant these nasturtiums and stick this tray under the grow light because they don't need to sit on the heat mat to germinate. Over here, I'm gonna put my four new varieties of tomatoes. I've already planted all my tomatoes out, except for these four that I was waiting on. So we're gonna have some tomatoes in here. We're gonna have our different types of echinacea or cone flowers on this side. And this whole entire tray is gonna be petunias. Because I don't know if I, I think I said, one of my green stalks, this one right here, or the leaf, my the one with the shorter cells, is going to be nasturtiums, just complete nasturtiums. And then my other one that I have is going to be just petunias. <laughs> so that is why I'm planting so many. And then I want petunias in the garden as well. So I think it's time to go ahead and get planting. Now nasturtiums come in two different st styles. They come in ones that vine and ones that bush. I am planting the ones that bush in the green stalk and these ones are the ones that vine. So I like to plant these ones toward the edges of my raised beds so that they can vine out into the walkway. Nasturtium seeds are really weird looking. They look like dried up, I don't know, they're really big. <laughs> so we're gonna get one of these. I'm just gonna put one per cell because Last year I had really good germination rate with these and they germinate pretty quickly. So if I have one cell that doesn't germinate, I'll just pop a seed in there to fill in the hole and I'll let it germinate later. If they don't all come up at the, you know, if I have a hole that's empty and I end up filling it, you know, a week later, that's fine. Look at that friend. We already have one tray done. Yeah, this is probably not the best thing for the seeds to get them touching the soil. I've never been that good at labeling when it comes to gardening, but this year, even these ones that I transplanted, I have labeled. I've been doing a much better job. So I wanna make sure I label these. And I'm not only gonna label the variety, which are, these are Alaska red nasturtiums. And the cool thing about the Alaska nasturtiums is they have variegated leaves. So their leaves are different colors versus just a straight green color. And today is March 6th. Twenty twenty three. And I'm going to put that these ones are going in the raised bed. Because the other ones are going to go in the green stalks. So one thing done. So far my tape method for labeling has been working. I'm going to stick these under the grow lights right now. I'll water everything at the end because I don't want to be spraying water anywhere near my seed packets. So we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and just start labeling and planting so we can clear space on here. These nasturtiums here, these three, I'm going to also not keep on the heat mat to germinate because they just don't need that temperature. I have my heat mat turned up just a little bit because all my tomatoes are on my heat mat right now. And so I definitely don't want these nasturtiums needing to germinate on something so warm. So I'm going to go ahead and label all of these and then I'll plant them. So these are cherry rose jewel nasturtiums nasturtiums are some of the coolest flowers i absolutely enjoy them so much because their leaves are so unique they're circles and they're just unlike so many different things and they are very easy to grow if i can grow nasturtiums especially from seed 
anybody can grow nasturtiums. Tip top rows. So these varieties, these three varieties are a bushing variety. I know with the littler seeds, the way you top them is a lot of people will just put vermiculite on the top and not any extra soil. But these seeds are so big compared to a lot of the other ones we're going to be... Oops, I dropped one. Oh, there's one there too. I don't know which variety this one is because I dropped two, but I'll just stick it in here. But let's see. Oh yeah, we can kind of just push the soil together over top to close that hole. I can tell, I think I did pretty good pressure on these blocks because they seem to be holding up really well. They're not trying to like fall apart or anything as I push the soil over the top to close the hole. I'll push that one in a little bit better because that one was a really big seed. These are all flowers. These nasturtiums kind of have the same color. They're gonna have a little bit of difference, but they're pretty similar. So I thought that that would be really pretty all right, so they're all closed up. I'm gonna put these under the grow lights and I'll water them when we're done. This is definitely my happy place right here, here and in the kitchen, <laughs> my two happy places. It's kind of, my life revolves around food, growing food and preserving food and making food and eating food and just, I love it so much. I have found though for myself that it does help if I label before I put any seeds in the ground. I am notorious for forgetting to label. And so I'm trying to get in the habit of taking a second before I even open a seed packet to label what I'm doing. Now, a lot of people put two seeds in every cell. My seeds generally have excellent germination rate. And so I typically only put one seed per cell. I'm not trying to maximize every little spit of you know, heat mat space or grow light space. So I just put one seed per cell. You can see how small that seed is. I don't want to completely fill this hole because I'd be way too much soil. So I'm just taking a little bit of the compost and pushing it over. And you can see with the pin in there how much that hole still technically has to fill. But that seed is not gonna have that much energy to germinate through that much soil. So I'm just gonna take just a bit of the soil and top it over the top. Some people, when they do soil blocks, especially with those small seeds like that, instead of even covering it with soil, they just put vermiculite on the top. I am just putting a little bit of the soil over the seed and then I do put vermiculite on the top of it at the very, very end. So my eucalyptus seeds are itty bitty teeny tiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant every single one. Well, yeah. So I'm gonna put a couple, normally I don't seed extra seeds in each hole because I, I usually have really good germination and I should on these two, it says 86% germination rate, but these are supposed to be so hard to grow that I am going to just attempt, I'm just going to plant every seed. Okay. And then these are so small too, I'm going to do the same technique that I did before where I'm not going to totally fill that hole just a little, you know what? I'll fill it just a little bit and then I'm gonna to top it with some vermiculite. Well, I thought my eucalyptus seeds were small, but these are my petunia seeds and they are even smaller. So this is gonna be a challenge. My goal was to plant this whole tray with petunias, but I don't know if I have, I don't know, I don't know. They, it's almost like dust. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just plant half of this tray and then I will thin them, I guess. I don't even know, that it's like dust. I don't even know if these are seeds. These are just cheap seeds I got at the grocery store. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna work. Okay, <laughs> that's all those. That might be a total fail. We'll find out together. Petunias are one of those really affordable starts to purchase at the nursery or big box store or wherever. And so if these don't germinate, I'm not gonna worry about it. I will just purchase them at the store because I still, even if these don't germinate, I want I want one whole green stock to be petunias. I bought these at the grocery store because I forgot to order them as seeds. And that is why I got them at the store. Now I have to figure out what to put in the other half of this tray. Right now I'm planting my echinacea or coneflower. These in my zone will perennialize, so they'll come back year after year. They will not flower this year. So I will start the seed this year and it's gonna be next year when I see the fruits of this labor. I'll have pretty green foliage and I plan to plant some of these echinacea plants throughout my landscaping. So in the front, so if you've been here as we've been doing this whole big landscaping project, not just the yard or the garden, but the yard as well, I want to, I'm starting seed basically to plant some perennials throughout the whole landscape project. This is gonna be a lot more affordable for me than if I was to purchase these as starts. That's why I'm starting so much lavender because I want lavender throughout the landscape. And lavender plants can be kind of spendy in my area to buy as starts or plants, but a seed packet is really cheap. But so far the lavender that I started a while ago it has not germinated yet because it takes, on this seed packet, it says 14 to 28 days to germinate, which is probably the longest germination I have ever seen on a seed packet before. I've never grown lavender before. I, I um, have started lavender, some that I purchased from MI Gardener, and that hasn't germinated yet. Oh, shoot, friends. I have been talking and not labeling. <laughs> so I know what I've done here. So I'm gonna label these Ooh! while I'm talking. But the lavender that I started from MI Gardener, it says that it's gonna take two years for it to flower. But this, what kind of lavender? This is called Lady Lavender. And this says that it will flower the first year. So I'm excited to try that. I'll, I might buy starts as well, but I'm gonna attempt to grow them from seed because I have the equipment, I might as well try if I can start 25 plants for under $2 because I already have the trays and all I have to do is purchase some seed and some soil. I didn't do any research when it came to to propagating these fig cuttings. When we were moving, I was pregnant, we were remodeling, we were trying to harvest all the things and there was a lot going on. We were moving all the things. And so I didn't have the bandwidth to learn a new skill. And so that's why I was not going to take any fig cuttings. And last minute I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna break a piece of branches off. I'm gonna stick it in water. If they die, they die. I'm at no loss because if I didn't take them at all, I wouldn't have them. And I have not done any research since then on it and they have done so well. So if you know someone with a fig tree, ask them if you can take a cutting and just plop it in some water and see what happens. Now those are an Italian white fig. I do wanna grow some other styles of figs, but right now I have four free fig cuttings that are growing and hopefully they do just as well in the soil that as they did in the water. Now I'm taking some vermiculite and I'm topping all of my trays with vermiculite and I'm watering 
this in really, really well. And then I don't have humidity domes for all of these trays and recycled containers. So I am taking some plastic wrap and I'm gonna put plastic wrap over the trays so that it can keep the humidity in and it can be an ideal temperature and humidity for the seedlings to germinate. Now I am trying to reuse this plastic wrap. This The first two plastic pieces you're gonna see here are ones that I've used to germinate my peppers, but because now I have so many more trays, I am gonna have to grab a little bit more plastic wrap to cover the rest of the trays. So we're going to let all of these seedlings just sit on the heat mat. As soon as I see one plant germinate, they go under the grow lights. We got everything done today we needed to get done and I am thrilled with the progress. I officially only have one more tray and that includes using, that's because I've been using those recycled ones. I have some more coming like I said. So I'm really excited to see how the soil blocks go and how how, how they work and whether they're successful. Now I did, I did something here. Because I only planted this half in petunias, I had these soil blocks that needed to be filled. I did remove the center one so that I can water from down here. And I went ahead and I decided to plant a few more tomatoes. I have already officially planted all the tomatoes I was gonna plant this year. And I was trying to cut back on the varieties but I had space, so I thought I would pull these three out. I wasn't planning on growing them this year, but I went ahead and decided to go ahead and grow them. So I have Moneymaker, Old German, Rose Tomato. I just bought these seeds this year, and I really wanted to grow them, but then when I was going through all the other ones, it didn't make the cut, but since I had space, it officially made the cut. And then these are the Clementines, these are the orange cherry tomatoes. So we've got those there. Everything else we had already talked about. We've got our different stocks. We have our tomatoes, the Jasper, Wisconsin 55, Martha's. We've got our cone flowers or echinacea, the three different varieties. Eucalyptus, lavender, rosemary, and these are the tomatoes that I had started the other day, which I have not told you the tomatoes that I have started. I've got them right here. And I started a bunch of flowers too. I could go over and show you what I started. If I show you that I can put these seeds away, that's why I haven't put them away. I've been a lot better about putting my seeds away as I go. So I have done, oh, I guess I already planted Wisconsin 55, but I planted all the seeds that I had. So I'm glad that I bought more. So in this tray, I have one row of tomatillos Wisconsin 55, three rows of Roma tomatoes, Trophy, Paul Robertson, Valencia, and Dr. Witchies. In another tray that I already have things that have sprouted so they're under the grow lights, I have Mortgage Lifters, Watermelon Beef Steak, two different styles of cherry tomatoes, actually four different styles of cherry tomatoes. I have one from the Dollar Tree because we're gonna just try that one out. Now this, Cherry tomatoes supposed to have clusters that have about 40 to 50 tomatoes in each cluster, so I'm curious to see how that goes. We have our aster flower, our both of our Rebecca. I grew both of these last year. These will perennialize in my zone. So we have Cherokee Sunset and Cherry Brandy. These were absolutely stunning last year. And then I have some white dwarf. Sun, um, Cosmos, and I actually forgot that I was gonna put some of these in the green stock. I totally forgot that until I just saw those. That's why they I have the dwarf variety, and I think the white and the pink nasturtiums together is gonna look really nice. So that now <laughs> is a lot that we've got going on here, and I'm really excited. We have all the tomatoes plus a bunch of extra planted out if I have extra tomatoes, or if I have extra seedlings of any kind, I will just gift them to friends and family or whoever may want them because I I know that because this is my first year here, I'm not exactly sure how many I need. I could sit down and technically do all the math, but that's not fun to me. I'd rather just get in here, plant stuff. If I didn't plant enough, I will have documentation on how much I did and I will just supplement with greenhouse starts. And if I plant too many, I will donate to friends and family and then I can um, not start as many next year or I start even more and then I have more to gift. So I'm really, really thrilled with the progress. Things are starting to actually green up in here. We've got a lot of color 
and well over here we have a lot of color i will do separate kind of an update on everything that's sprouted but i have to say this vermont compost is an absolute win when it comes to how healthy my seedlings so far look they look the best they've ever looked bar none so much better and the lights are the same everything else is the same except for the fact that i'm using the vermont compost now that I officially have all my tomatoes started, I'm going to go ahead and get them put away. I'm really trying hard this year to do better about keeping my seeds organized. And so far, I've been doing a better job. So we have our slicing tomatoes here and our cherry tomatoes. You can also put the Rebecca away because I'm not going to need to get these out again until next year. That's the crazy thing about tomatoes and peppers. Unlike something like a green bean or a carrot, where you continually plant them out, you plant the tomatoes, peppers, tomatillos one time, and then that's it, versus something where you're constantly doing succession planting, which I'm going to try to also be better about this year is making sure that I plant six, I plant carrots, you know, every two weeks for a while so that I can have a nice succession and not all my carrots come in at one time. Well, friend, I just want to say a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my grow room. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming this year and I'm just really looking forward to it. It has been officially about two weeks because of the snow since any work has been done on the garden and tomorrow is the first day they are going to be back and I know I'm putting faith that by the time these plants are ready to be put out into the garden I will have a place to put them it might not be finished but at least there will be soil inside those raised beds and we'll be able to plant something hopefully plant these plants hopefully in those raised beds which I'm really looking forward to it and I'm just really excited that you're here along the journey and I'm really excited to fill out my green stalks. I have such big dreams for these green stalks and don't forget if you are interested in the original these are the two in this middle right here they are on sale for $99 you that is the best price ever on them and you can get as many as you want at that price which is an extraordinary deal and doesn't come around very often and I just want to thank Greenstock for offering that sale to my viewers because it is pretty incredible. The sale goes from March 12th to March 16th. So if you're interested, you might want to jump on it. And that is March 12th and March 16th of 2023. So if you're watching this after, unfortunately, that sale will be long gone. But it is here right now. So if you're interested, don't forget to check out the link down below. I will link to them so that you can just head on over there and see what they have going on. And then they do have the wheelie base or the base that, the rotating base, I should say, or the wheeling base. And there's a lot of other fun accessories. I don't have all the accessories, but they have a ton of fun accessories over there. So I know you'll enjoy hanging out on their website for a little bit. So again, thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I greatly appreciate it. I don't take that for granted, the fact that we get to spend so much time together. And I really appreciate you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.